Hello and welcome to Introduction to Road Hierarchy, part of my Chip and Rat Introduction to series. This week it's all about road hierarchy and how to use it in city skylines. Before we get started in full, I do want to note that this is a very basic introduction tutorial. This is not meant for advanced players or people who are familiar with city planning and city road design. This is meant for people who are just starting on City Skylines or who are not necessarily familiar with these concepts. I do also recommend watching my Introduction to Interchanges and Introduction to Intersections tutorials after you watch this to get an idea of where to place certain types of interchanges or intersections and how to use them in your city along with road hierarchy. So first things first, what is hierarchy? Well, hierarchy is a system or organization that rates some things higher than others based on status or authority. Hierarchy is often depicted as a triangle, such as this, where you have a wide base and a narrow top, and the different categories go from bottom, which has the most people or the most things, all the way to the top, where you usually have one single person, one single thing. One example of hierarchy that isn't roads is in a federalized system, where at the bottom of the triangle you would have your local city, or your, even your neighborhood, if you have a neighborhood organization. And at the top, you would have your country's leader, or a state's leader, or something like that, like a governor or a president. Road hierarchy just takes that concept and applies it to roads and how they should be used. For the purposes of this video, this is the road hierarchy I will be using at a general level. So at the bottom, you have a one lane in each direction local road, is what we'll call them. At the next level up, you have a four lane, or two lanes in each direction, boulevard. That will be our collector roads. And then at the next level, you have a six lane road with bike lanes. That would be our arterial road. And then at the very top of the hierarchy, you have a highway. And I have one highway going in each direction. So I use some terms to describe these roads, such as a local road, a collector road, an arterial road, and a highway. So what do those mean? Let's start with a local road. It's exactly what it sounds like. It is a road that is local to your house, or local to a business, or local to a small area. It covers a very small area, but is what brings you to your exact location. A collector road, being the next step up, does exactly what it says it does. It collects the local roads, and puts them in a more efficient pattern to go farther distances. Then you have the arterial roads, which act like an artery in your bloodstream, but for the city. This is what carries cars longer distances throughout your city, and depending on the city, will actually be what carries your cars throughout the entire length of it. Lastly, at the top of the pyramid, we have highways or freeways. These are what will get you far distances, like from New York to Chicago, or Los Angeles to Houston. While great at getting you long distances, they are absolutely terrible at getting you to your specific location. At the most basic and extreme version of road hierarchy, you would never want people to go directly from one type of road to the next. So for example, you would never want somebody to go from a local road directly over to another local road. You would instead want them to go up a level in the pyramid to the collector road, over as far in the collector road as they need to go, and then into the local road again. Same thing if they want to get, say, from this neighborhood over to this neighborhood. You would have them go from this local road to this collector, not directly to another collector. You would have them go instead to an arterial road, then to a collector, and then back to the local road here. Essentially, you can look at this as going up one side of the pyramid, as far over and to the other side as you need to go and then back down. The farther distance you have to travel, the higher up the road hierarchy, the higher up in the pyramid you have to go, which means the more different types of roads you have to go. So say you wanted to leave the town entirely, you would pack up from your local road, go into the collector, go to the arterial, and then off onto the freeway, and then into the next area of town. Another thing to note is that the further down the road hierarchy you go, the closer together you can have your intersections, because cars will be traveling slower, so turns are easier to make, and they don't obstruct traffic as much. What this means, in essence, is that the further down the pyramid you go, towards local roads, the closer you can have these intersection points. 
and therefore the more of them you can have per little area. The higher you go up in the hierarchy towards the other extreme, which would be your freeways, the fewer intersection points or interchanges that you would want in order to prevent traffic buildup and other problems. Now, of course, a city that was designed with neighborhoods that were all just one single straight piece of road like this is not extremely efficient, both in terms of density and in terms of traffic due to the amount of left and right turns and intersections on the collector roads that you would have to have in order to fill up the entire space appropriately. A more realistic neighborhood that you might see is something more like this, where you have multiple local roads connecting multiple sets of buildings into one distinct neighborhood unit. So for example, this would be one little neighborhood, and this would be one neighborhood here, as would this area, and this area, and this area. So using road hierarchy, let's give a couple of examples. If you live here, and your friend lives here on this street, how are you going to get there? Well, there are two ways. You can go through the local roads this way, and into here. Since this is in the same neighborhood unit, this is perfectly fine, and as a city planner, I would be more than happy with that result. They could also theoretically go from here into the collector road and down here. I would not be as happy with that result because they are now leaving their same neighborhood unit to go back into their same neighborhood unit. Now let's take this same house, you live here, let's say, and your friend lives over here. In order to get there, there is no possible way to get there via local roads. You can't hop over to here, and you can't hop over to here. You have to go either this way to this collector, all the way down, and then into the local roads, or you can take the local roads and still end up in the collector and end up there. You are forcing people who are in one distinct neighborhood group to use a collector road to get to another distinct neighborhood group. Continuing this example, let's say that this is where you work, and this is a business park area and you live here. In order to get there, you have to go up to a collector road, and now because you're leaving a neighborhood area that I have designated all with one collector road, you have to go to an arterial road, and then into the next collector road to get to your business. There is no possible way to go from one collector to another in this example. Same thing if you were to try to go from this group of neighborhoods into this group of neighborhoods. You would still have to go from your local road into a collector, to an arterial, into a new collector, and then into another local road. Now let's take a look at the city that was in the introduction part of this video. I like this city because it has both good and bad examples of road hierarchy and road hierarchy use. For example, here is a couple of neighborhoods that have done a fairly good job of making people use road hierarchy in a somewhat appropriate fashion. I say somewhat appropriate because as you can see here, you have a few local roads and neighborhoods that collect right into an arterial road, which is not ideal for road hierarchy and following that pyramid. However, for the most part, the neighborhoods do exit onto smaller roads that are collector roads such as this one and this one up here, which may look like an arterial, but is in fact being used as a collector in this city. In order to get to the highway from this neighborhood, you have to exit onto either this collector road or this collector road here. You can't exit directly onto the arterial, which is more ideal. You then have to follow one of these collectors over to an arterial, such as this road, or in this case, you follow it to this road, travel down the arterial road here, onto another arterial road here, and then onto the highway. In a much worse example, however, here you have a bunch of neighborhood roads that are going into a collector here, but also into an arterial road here and here. In this city, this road that has the train station attached to it is even actually a highway. It's not just an arterial road it is actually designated a state highway. Having a bunch of neighborhood roads go into it significantly slows down traffic and adds a bunch of unnecessary intersections here that have to have lights and slow down everyone else from getting into it. However, with the zoomed out picture, you can see that some road hierarchy principles have been used to great effect. If you look at the freeway, in this case, the highways and city skylines, you can see that they have very few entrances and exits relative to the arterial roads and the arterial roads have relatively few entrances and exits compared to local roads and collector roads. This city did not do a particularly good job of using collector roads 
and instead uses arterials as mostly collector roads for local neighborhoods. As with almost everything, art, English, and even flag design or road hierarchy, some rules are meant to be broken. Of course, the key thing is knowing when to break the rules and when to follow them. Here's another example of what I think demonstrates fairly good road hierarchy use and design. This is the city of no roundies that we built entirely on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash chippinrat. If you're interested in watching me build cities and do different things with them, go and check it out. A good way, in my opinion, to check your road hierarchy and how people are using your road is to use the traffic routes button, which can be found on the left side of your screen right here. When you click on a road, such as this highway ramp, you'll get everyone who crosses across that road and where they come from and where they're going. In this case, you can see that everyone exiting this highway is immediately going from the arterial road here into a collector road here, and then exiting into a local road into their neighborhood here or here or over here. Some people are going to shops that are located on the collector road, and other people, mostly trucks, are traveling through the city to get to the other side. As for where people are coming from, if we pull up only the private vehicles, you can see that there are people who are traveling all the way from down here to get to the highway to go over to here. However, most people are coming from outside of town, the airport, or outside of town this way, and using the freeway to travel a vast distance to get into those local neighborhoods and shops. If we pull up another exit, such as this one coming off of my interchange that I've nicknamed Spaghetti here, you can see a similar story for all of the vehicles coming out. They're either coming from the airport, this town down here, out of town this way, or somewhere over here, and they are traveling a vast distance to get into this arterial zone here, or a collector road, and the local neighborhoods up in here, or down in here. But you can see, even though they are traveling a vast distance on an arterial road, there are very few intersections that interfere with where they need to go, and they don't have to turn a lot to get to their final destination. They can take one direct road, and they don't have to go from one arterial to the next, to the next, to the next, or from one collector to the next, to the next, to the next. To summarize, road hierarchy at its basic level is intelligent use of smaller and smaller roads to get you closer and closer to your destination. As a city planner, it's important to know what road hierarchy is, and how to use it and when to use it, but also it's important to know that you won't always be able to get it 100% right and that sometimes proper traffic management means breaking road hierarchy just a little bit to ensure that cars can get somewhere more efficiently. However, one of the common problems that I find with people who ask for traffic help on the Steam Workshop or in my Twitch streams is that they're not using road hierarchy to their advantage, and rather they're letting it work against them. Road hierarchy is simply one more tool that you can have in your toolbox to help make your city look more well-planned, more well-designed, run a little bit better, and maybe look a little bit more pretty and purposeful while you're at it. Well, that is it for this introduction to road hierarchy video. My next video will tie in road hierarchy with public transportation, and give you a basic introduction to public transportation hierarchy using similar concepts that we've learned here. If there's something you'd like me to do an introduction to series tutorial on, please let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you do, Alfredo here says you should subscribe, or maybe check out this video that YouTube recommends. Well, go on. Why don't you do it?